Dr. Yoni Witten here, and this week we're talking all about bunions. Now, bunions are one of the most common causes for foot pain and dysfunction in modern society. They're also not doing much to help the looks of your feet. And to tell you the truth, that's one of the main reasons why people get surgery to correct them, just because they're unsightly. But it's the functional problems that are created by having bunions that you really need to be concerned about. And what I wanna go over today is a few easy strategies that you can put into place each day to correct bunions if you've already got them and to prevent you from getting them if you haven't gotten them yet. Now let's get into this. What you wanna see when you're looking for normal structure in the foot is that the line along the inside of the foot here runs in a straight line out the big toe, just like that. If you start to see that that big toe is moving across the other toes and you're starting to get a big bump right here, those are the classic signs with uh, bunion formation. The bunion will often be red, swollen, and inflamed right around there. One of the most damaging things about having bunions is that the toe can actually become fused in that position where it's come across the rest of the foot. Now, once fusion has taken place, you've lost all motion in the foot and the options for treating the bunion become extremely limited. So from a treatment standpoint, one of the most important things that you can do is just to restore normal motion to your big toes. To do that, what I like to use is a rubber band or a very thin exercise band to begin gently tractioning those toes back into their normal alignment. Let me show you how to do that. What I'm gonna be using for this traction exercise is just a very thin piece of elastic. You can see here, it doesn't take much at all to stretch this out. Now, oftentimes in the clinic, I'll just use a few rubber bands to accomplish the exact same thing. So you're gonna wrap that around the big toes and then you're gonna move your feet away from each other just like this. So you're moving outward like that. And what that causes is the elastic to pull the big toes inward like this. And you'll know that you're in the right position when you see these big gaps between the first toe and the second toe, just like you see there. The other thing that you're gonna find is that the big toe comes into a nice alignment with the midline of the foot, just like you see there. It should be a nice straight line going down the foot. Now this works great as a standalone therapy. It's a passive therapy. You can hang out in this position for one to three minutes a day and just allow the band to do the work. But once you get really comfortable with this, you may want to add in an active component to your rehab. And what you would do for that is just lift your feet up off the floor and begin curling your toes downward and then slowly upward, pulling them into extension back up towards your shins and then just go back and forth, curling the toes and bringing them back up, all the while maintaining the gap between the feet that keeps tension on the big toes. You're just training those toes to move from a more neutral position. So you're gonna work back and forth here, about 20 to 30 repetitions. If your feet are very deconditioned, they may start to cramp up while you're performing this exercise. So if that happens, just set your feet down, take the band off, take a little break, and then get back into it once the cramps have subsided. But toe curls with the band are a fantastic way to restore normal alignment and regain lost motion in your toes. Another great tool that's widely available that can help you to restore normal alignment to your foot and recover lost motion are these strange looking things. These are called toe spreaders, and this particular brand is the best that I've found. They're called Awesome Toes. The reason that these are so good is because of the super high quality construction and the fact that they are so thin on the edges, which actually allows this brand, unlike most, to be worn comfortably inside of your shoes, provided that you're making healthy footwear choices. Let me show you, me show you how these Awesome Toes work. What you're gonna do is line it up from the big hole to the small hole, place the largest loop, around your big toe, and then just work your way down one toe at a time, pushing them through the openings in the awesome toe device. All the way down to the baby toe, and then you're gonna push the spacers as far down into the gaps between your toes as it'll go. So you can see already in a seated position, the big gaps that it's pushing into my foot when you compare it to my foot when it's not wearing this device. Then when I stand up on it, the spaces will get even larger. So what that's doing is it's training your foot into its normal, spaced out, healthy alignment. One of the best things about this, like I was saying, is how thin it is around the edges. So you can barely even tell that you're wearing this. And it's also super thin across the bottom, which means that I can bend my toes 
like that effortlessly. And because these particular toe spreaders are so thin and comfortable, it opens the door to use them with all types of other applications. Like I said, you can wear them all day long inside of your shoes and barely even notice that they're there. And obviously the more that you're wearing them, the greater the effect that they're gonna have on your foot structure and functionality. But you can also use them for something else. Because they're so comfortable, you can use them in combination with other forms of active rehabilitation for your feet. Things like training on a wobble board or training on a slack block can be enhanced greatly by combining toe spreaders with that process. So the idea behind wobble board training is to put the body and the foot onto an unstable surface to ramp up activation of the little intrinsic muscles in the bottom of the feet, the muscles that are responsible for maintaining normal structure of the foot over time. Activation of them gets enhanced greatly when you get onto these unstable surfaces. So what if you could activate those muscles from their optimal alignment, which is what you're doing when you do it in combination with wearing toe spreaders. And this is a very powerful strategy for retraining your foot to have normal alignment and functionality in the long term. So same thing here with the slack block, getting onto a very unstable surface, but now with the toe spreaders, we're retraining the muscles of the foot to work while being in this position. And you're doing it very intensely on this super unstable surface. So once you get your position, you can see the muscles in the foot just going crazy to try and maintain that. All the while you're reinforcing that optimal alignment in the foot. Training on an unstable surface is a super effective and very efficient way to ramp up muscular activation in the feet. Now, when you combine it with toe spreaders, the payback that you're gonna get in terms of restoration of normal alignment and normal functionality in your feet is enormous. What you wanna be shooting for here is one to five minutes a day consistently over time. Remember that old saying that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure? Well, that goes doubly so in the case of bunions because most bunions that we see nowadays are self-inflicted. They're caused by poor choices in footwear and not knowing the consequences of wearing those kinds of shoes. So let me give you a quick lesson. The human foot is not shaped like this. The human foot spreads out like this. So when you cram the foot into a shoe like this for extended periods of time, and making things worse, put it in a high heel which jams your weight down into that very narrow toe box, don't be surprised at all if you end up with bunions. Your feet need to be able to spread out and the weight needs to be evenly distributed from front to back. Here are a few important things to look out for when you're selecting footwear. First, the height of the sole of the shoe should be the same underneath the toe as it is at the heel. That's called a zero drop. There's no heel elevation here. And some shoe companies will even advertise zero drop on their packaging. Another thing to look out for is the shape of the toe box. You can see how wide this toe box is and that it's squared off at the front. It doesn't come to a triangular point because that's not what feet are shaped like. You can also see that the material here is flexible and will allow your foot to expand as you place weight on it and the feet heat up. Another special thing that I love about these shoes is the tread underneath is gapped around the big toe so that the big toe can move independently of the rest of the foot. This allows for ultimate flexibility, freedom of motion, and comfort. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you'll put the information to good use. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to stay updated on the new videos that I put out each week to help you achieve the best posture and mobility of your life. And if you're struggling with chronic foot pain or back pain or neck pain, you've got to check out my pain fix protocol. This is the new science for the permanent resolution of these types of problems. I'm going to include links for the pain fix protocol and for the toe spreaders in the description down below. And we'll see you guys next week.